Hello everybody! The 2.0 update has been out for a hot minute now, and I thought it would be perfect to finally release my complete city town guide. This video should be a complete guide to everything you need to know about City Town and all of the secrets you can find so far as of the 2.0 update. So if you're looking for a specific topic or quest, look in the timestamps in the description and you will be able to find what you're looking for. There's going to be a lot of information in this video, so let's jump right in. To start off your whole journey to City Town, you will need to reach Friendship Level 7 with Batsmaru, Keropi, Kuromi, Choco Cat, and Cinema Roll. Doing all of the friendship quests with them up until level 7 will unlock the quest Ship Shape for you. So let's do a little walkthrough on how this quest works. Talk to Bats Maru, who currently asks for your help with a mysterious boat that appeared near the resort docks. Next, find Choco Cat, who is discussing the boat with Karopi. Together, you will all head back to the docks, where Choco Cat will try to start the boat. But unfortunately, it breaks, as you all wonder how it got there. A light blue figment appears. Choco Cat takes it for further research. Then Kiropi suggests visiting the cafe to tell Hello Kitty. When you arrive at the cafe, Hello Kitty is missing, so you'll need to bake them one milk bread and one pumpkin pie to have as a snack. But then suddenly, Hello Kitty arrives, saying she saw the boat too. And while she was imagining how to use the boat, a pink figment appeared. Outside the cafe, Choco Cat suggests trying to manifest more figments, but it doesn't work. Now, you have to find Kuromi, who tells you a strange object appeared while she imagined her novel. Follow her to her special location to catch the orange figment. Now, you must return to Choco Cat, who gives you the light blue figment, and Keropi gives you the pink figment. Choco Cat will also provide the crafting plans for the essence of imagination, which you will craft to proceed. Once you go all the way back to the boat to see if the essence of imagination fixes it, and luckily for us, it works. But you're not going to City Town quite yet. You sadly will end the quest and you must wait until the next day to continue to start the Into the Fog quest. Batsmaru tells you he's excited to start the new adventure and he'll ask you to gather all of your friends. So first find a Choco Cat who asks you to give him three wood blocks, three sparks, three mechanisms, and one blank book to prepare for the journey. After giving him the items, speak to Kiropi and let him know it's time to board the boat. He will then ask you to go find Cinema Roll and tell him the same. Next, talk to Kuromi, who mentions that we will need snacks. So you've got to head to the cafe, where Hello Kitty will have you cook five veggie breads, three cinnamon breads, and one mama's apple pie. Afterwards, give those snacks to Karomi. Once everybody is ready, you'll meet at the boat and set sail. Upon arriving at a mysterious location, Choco Cat will ask everybody to split up and explore. Check the timestamps if you're looking for all of the mailboxes, the new Gudetamas, and everything like that. So Cinema Roll will be your partner to explore, and then you have to go talk to Choco Cat and Kiropi, and then you have to go talk to Karomi and Bats. Once you talk to all of them about their findings, it's time to regroup at the docks. As Choco Cat gathers everyone else's thoughts, a voice appears. It's Usahana! She introduces herself and explains how she arrived at City Town. So she just imagined a beautiful rainbow-colored city, and then, poof, one day, she was in City Town. That's pretty awesome. 
And I do think this is all hinting at the full island being called Imagination Island, but that's another video. To give her a welcome gift, Karomi will have us give a mama's apple pie to her. Then Usahana expresses all of her joy and welcomes us back anytime. Now onto the important parts. Leveling up Usahana. So now that we've gotten to City Town and we've met Usahana, it's time to level her up. As of the 2.0 update, you will only be able to get her to level 10. This is far from the max level because just like the previous characters, kind of like Wish Me Mel, they will give us more levels in the future. But for now, there's only 10. So let me show you how to level up in a couple of days. It's not long at all. And as we level up, I will show you each friendship quest. These will include unlocking the cafe, getting different recipes like mochi, dango, and boba. So stay tuned and we will walk through all of this. So let's talk about the best gifts for Usohana. Right now, there are only really two main gifts with one being much better than the other for leveling her up. If you are a newer player, you may just want to give her the color pillars, which are critters that can be caught all around city town. If you are a little more advanced and already have the colorful lamb plush crafting plans, I would suggest stocking up on those and using those to level up Usahana. Because remember, the hearts of a gift don't impact friendship level as much as the number of tags of a specific item. So since the colorful lamb plush has four tags, it is much better than anything else. So stock up on those and that will get you to level her up the fastest. But while you are giving her gifts, do not forget to bring two very important companions with you. The first one being Hello Kitty, of course, because Hello Kitty's companion ability actually boosts the friendship level while gifting. So this tiny boost will make a difference if you bring her with each time you gift Usahana. The second companion you should bring with is My Melody. This is because you will get a bonus return gift from Usahana, which her return gift is rice, which so far we don't know what it's going to be used for. So having more is always better. And just like every other character, you can gift her three times a day unless you use friendship blossoms and friendship bouquets. And remember, you cannot trade friendship blossoms, but you can go to somebody else's island to use a friendship bouquet. So keep that in mind. So you will be able to gift her multiple times in one day if you use the blossom and the bouquet. Once you reach level 3 with Usahana, you will unlock the quest, a whole new menu. This will help you finally open up the Imagination Cafe. So let's jump into it. First up, you meet Usahana in City Town, and she tells you that you are going to be her guide of Friendship Island. So take her on the boat back to Friendship Island. You will introduce her to all of your friends and show her how well you can cook at Hello Kitty's Cafe. Usahana says she likes fruit flavors like apples, strawberries, and pineapples. So we make her three different desserts. She says this gives her an idea, but not to worry about it at the moment. Then you'll take her to Chaco Cat's tent and she will tell us more about how exactly she arrived to City Town. And Chaco Cat, of course, asks for more sparks and mechanisms. But now, Usahana wants to take you back to the City Town. And then she tells you that she wants to open Imagination Cafe with you because she saw how well you baked at Hello Kitty's Cafe. But oh no! When she locked up the cafe last, she doesn't remember where she put the key. So it's your job to go find the colorful key. If you go all the way to the right of the main area on City Town, you will find these three metal pipes. 
you can actually climb up these. So climb up and up and then you will get on this one landing. But there are some more pipes here. So climb up these ones as well until you get on the purple level. And this is where you will find the colorful key. So pick it up and go back to Usahana. Once you gift her the key, you'll be able to go inside the Imagination Cafe. She gives you the recipe to make rice flour, which you use rice to make. So it's time to test out the chef's station by crafting five of the rice flowers. Each one is five each, so when you craft five of them, you will actually get 25. Next, she gives you the recipe for mochi which the main ingredient is the rice flour. And we can already see all of the possible mochi flavors. Some of them are more intuitive than the other ones. But for example, confetti mochi is made with the rainbow sprinkles from the Happy Haven Days event. The creamy mochi is made with coral milk. Magical mochi is made with glow berries. Rich mochi is made with tofu. Spicy mochi is only made with magma bloom because cinnamon mochi is made with cinnabloom. And wheat mochi is made with flour. So keep those in mind when you open the cafe in the future and characters ask for these flavors. The next thing you unlock with your friendship journey with Usahana is the chef's kiss ability. This gives you the opportunity to make an extra item at the chef station. Level 5, you get another avatar palette. Number 6, you get the recipe for Dango. And then level 7, we will get another quest about the Imagination Cafe. So let's get into it. So first off, Usahana has you come to the cafe with her and make her some pineapple mochi. Then she asks you to make three more mochis. Creamy mochi, nutty mochi, and magical mochi. With these three mochis, she asks you to make a dango. So for each flavor, you must click on it and then select the flavor you want. Right now, they all appear as white, but I do believe they will fix this in the future because it's a little confusing. But let's get into the three different types of dango you can actually make. First up is the type of dango that has three different colors. And you can tell which one is which by the first one you put in will be the first one in the name. The second one will be the second one in the name. And then the third one will be the third one in the name. So with my example, I have a sweet strawberry coffee dango. And then in the image and how they appear in your cabin, they will appear in this color order. So flavor one is in the back, two in the middle, and then three in the front or bottom. And then the second type of dango you can make is a double dango. This means that you have two of the same flavor and then a second other flavor. So for my example, I have a double coffee sweet dango. The double flavor will always go first in the title, but whichever order you put them in, they will appear that way. So you could either do every other or two together and then the third next to each other. And then lastly, the third and final type of dango is a triple dango. This is pretty self-explanatory where you just have three of the same flavor and it makes it a triple dango. So in my example, it is a triple sweet dango. So now that you've mastered mochi and dango, it's time to open up the Imagination Cafe. To do this, you have to walk up to the computer and press Open Cafe. This is when your friends, which include residents and visitors, will come to the cafe. And once you speak with them, they will tell you their order. Then you can either say, I have it for you and then give it to them or say that you're working on it and then go make it. You can close the cafe at any time and that last order you had will just be saved for next time you open the cafe. You can only do about 10 orders per day, but you can always come back the next day and do more. For each order, you will get some coins. These will be used at the computer to order more ingredients but more on that later. So just remember to talk to them and then make what they want. And once you make it, talk to them again 
and you have to press I've got that already so you can finally give it to them. Because since some of the people who come are visitors, you can't gift them things, so you have to talk to them and give them to them that way. So you can actually cancel orders by pressing I can't make that right now, but try not to do this because that can kind of decrease the rating of the cafe because that actually comes into play. So when you speak to Usahana, you can ask how the cafe is doing and each different message will mean that you've gone up a little bit. So by successfully filling orders, you will not only get more cafe coins per order, but you'll also get more possible customers per day. So far, we know that if you do 10 completed orders, you'll get a bonus of one coin and you will get 12 customers per day instead of 10. And if you complete 50 orders in total, you will get two more cafe bonus coins and then a total number of 18 customers per day. And this only is going to increase. So this is just a cool incentive to actually run the cafe and fulfill all of these orders. This mechanic is so fun and I can't wait to see what other recipes get added in the future. Now back to leveling up Usahana's friendship. On level 8, we will get an upgrade to the chef's kiss ability. And then on level 9, we will get Usahana's famous flower accessory. And then finally on level 10, you unlock the quest Tea Time. And this will get you Boba. So let's go into this quest. Start by talking to Usahana where she will bring you into the cafe again and give you the recipe for boba. We need tea leaves and tapioca, which you can order at the computer. So far, you have to do one at a time, which is kind of tedious, and I hope they change this. Then you invite over three buddies to help give you some flavor ideas. Hello Kitty asks if you can make one with tofu, which will make rich boba. Pom Pom Pudding asks if you can make banana boba, which obviously uses bananas. And then Pachaco asks for strawberry, which uses strawberries. So all of these flavors are the same as for the mochi and dango, except there is no sweet because you'll see in a second, the honeycomb adds a sweet aspect. So having unsweetened sweet boba wouldn't make too much sense. So let me get into actually making the boba because it seems a little bit complex at first, but after I explain all of this, hopefully it's easy peasy lemon squeezy. So there's only two required ingredients to make boba, which are tea leaves and then one main ingredient. This is what gives it the flavor. So in my example, I have strawberries, but you can put anything that appears in the menu. Next is coral milk. So you can have none, which just means it would be a strawberry tea, or you could have milk in it, which makes it a strawberry milk tea. Next up is tapioca, which obviously either gives it boba, or if there's no tapioca, after the title, it'll say comma, no boba. Then there are four different variations of honeycomb. You can either do no honeycomb, which will make it unsweetened, one honeycomb, which is semi-sweet, two honeycombs, which is sweet, and then three honeycombs, which is very sweet. So you can mix and match all of these different aspects and create so many possibilities of different types of boba. So for the tea time quest, just create boba with any of the options, but using their main flavor, so strawberry for Pachac so strawberry for Pachaco, banana for Pom Pom Pudding, and tofu for Hello Kitty. You can do any variation of milk, boba, and sweetness. It so that finishes this quest, and hopefully soon we get more quests for Usahana. And now let's move on to everything that we can find around City Town. There are so many skyscrapers to explore and I suggest using a thermal potion to get to some of the more obscure areas. But first up, let me show you where the three new mailboxes are. First up, there's one in the middle of the city center. This one's pretty easy to find. 
And then the next one is to the right of the map near the Critter Park. When you first get to City Town, this is where Kuromi and Bats are. And then last but not least, the third mailbox is the hardest one to find because you have to climb up really high. So earlier in the video, I showed you where to find the colorful key and go to there, but there are even more pipes that you can climb up. So keep climbing all the way up to the tippity top and you will also find a photo op spot here. So talk to that null to unlock it. And there we have the final mailbox for the city rooftop. Next, let's talk about the new orange sherbet crates. These are found all over city town. And right now you should be able to find 27 of them, including one chest that has three of them inside of it. This chest is really difficult to find. It's so hidden. You might not be able to see it, but you'll be able to interact with it. Plus there are so many difficult locations such as this one, it's almost impossible to see. So just check everywhere if you can't find it right away. And there are some as well that you need a thermal potion to get to. So these orange sherbet crates are used to open up the rainbow tower. So to unlock the rainbow tower, which is where all of the visitor cabins will be, you have to walk up to the sign out front that has Usahana's face on it. Don't forget to bring my Melody with you when you unlock the Rainbow Tower because she will decrease the price of the crates by one, but sadly she doesn't decrease the price when you upgrade. And once you upgrade it, it will open up the building to have a beautiful lobby where you have to walk up to the elevator and select which floor you would like to go to. So once you meet Usahana, you will get two new visitors. They are both traveling visitors. So first up, Panya. What does she need in her cabin? To be in city town, to be near Usahana, three pieces of pirate furniture, one mochi, one sakura frappe, one bed, and two chairs. She also likes mochi, so add five mochi items in total to get her hearts up to five. Also with the 2.0 update, they did update the plus signs to now be hearts. And now for Boopy's requirements. He also must be in city town to be near Usahana. He must have six pieces of coastal furniture. He must have one dango and one vanilla shake. And he also likes mochi. So put in at least five pieces of mochi to get him up to five hearts. Panya and Boopy will be alternating the weeks that they travel, so keep an eye out for when they are coming. Now let me quickly show you where to find all of the new critters and fish. There are four new critters, the first one being the city wing, which is like the little pigeon. The second one is my favorite critter of all time, which is the dust bun. The color pillar, which is this little rainbow worm. And lastly is the crowbert, which these ones are only found at night on the tippity top of these skyscrapers. And there are only a few new fish so far. So first off, the coral scouter and the sun barb are found along the coast. It doesn't really matter where, and they're found at any time of day. Then this next fish, the pastel perch, is only found in this little pool on the rooftop. Next we've got the marbled mackerel, only found at the edge of the dock. Last but not least, we've got the twilight eye, which is only found on the west side of the coast, the left side of the map, you know? So those are the four new fish. In City Town, of course, there are brand new Guritama. There are 12 of them, and I'm going to show you the locations of all of them. Let's start over to the left of the map in this little alleyway. There's one Guritama hanging right by one of these dumpsters. Next, let's go to the left and climb up some of these pipes. Be careful, this one's a little tricky to climb on, so sometimes I've fallen down, but just try again and make sure you have enough stamina. Go over to these pipes as well, and keep climbing up. Once you get over here, you can either just jump over there or take the air to blow you up a little bit. 
And there is a Gudetama hiding in this cone. So snap a little pick with him. And let's continue on to the next one. We're going over to the street over here. Right next to all of these cones and the train tracks. This is the first of many Gudetamas here that are hidden in the potholes. Next, we can walk down a little bit more and find another one in a pothole. This one's really difficult to see, but he's just chilling right there. The next one, we're going right under the dock right here. And you'll find a very dapperly dressed Gudetama. The next one we're going to is on one of these small little islands to the left of the map. This one's my favorite one so far. Now let's go back to the main part of City Town. And we can find another Gudetama right under these stairs. Next, we're gonna hop back up and we'll find another Gudetama hiding under the pothole cover. So now let's climb up these pipes right here, where we will find another Gudetama on the tippity top of this roof. So keep climbing up and climbing up. Make sure you've got enough stamina. But before we go to the tippity top, there is one more Gudetama hiding under a pothole cover. So now we've got to climb up just another level. Using these pipes right here, we will climb up to the tippity top. Up here, there is a Gudetama right behind the photo op spot. If you haven't fully discovered this photo op spot yet, make sure to talk to the Null and it will unlock it in the collections and achievements menu. So now we're going to drop down to the right, and we'll find another Dapper Gudetama over here. We are almost finished! Just now fly down to the right, and we're going to find one in the critter area. So don't forget to snap photos with each and every one of these. Remember there are 12, and once you finish taking all of these photos, make your way back to the seaside resort and go up to the photo board. This is where Pachaco will walk up to you and give you yet another Gudetama prize. This time, it's a little baseball hat. I really like this because it kind of looks like the character hats. So if you have like a full collection of the character hats in a cabin, this would be a perfect addition for Gudetama. If you made it this far in the video and you're still here, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I really hope this helped. I'm sorry this took so long to come out at the time of making this. I just started work again and it's been a super hectic couple of weeks. I just appreciate you even if you knew all this information and you're still watching. That's kind of awesome. But yeah, I will see you all in the next one. And thank you. Goodbye.